Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is going to be a short update on some repairs that I had to do recently. And I'm afraid this whole video is going to be by voiceover because I didn't have my sound settings correct when I was recording this outside. As you can see, I'm outside and it's a cold and damp November day. And uh, what I'm showing you is the end of my off-center fed dipole. And you can see that the rope that was holding it up in the tree behind me has frayed and broken. This is my own fault. I threw this up into the trees fairly quickly back in the summer, just so I'd have something to get on the air. And I fully intended to uh, take it down and put a little bit more permanent fixtures in for it before the weather got cold and... Time got away from me, and I didn't get to do that. So we had a pretty windy day, and it finally came down. So I'm out here to do a quick repair. My plan is to just replace the rope with a plastic-coated steel cable for the portion of it that's in the tree and rubbing against branches. And then I'll put a short section of rope at the end going to the insulator. The device that I'm going to be using to do this, or at least to get the rope back up in the tree, is something that I call my antenna cannon. This is a pneumatic launcher that I built quite some time ago. There are tons of plans on the internet and YouTube videos about building these, so I'm not going to be showing any details on that. I will, however, put out the universal caution of do not try this at home. This is a pneumatically powered launcher. It can be dangerous. You need to know what you're doing and be very, very careful when you're doing anything like this. And as you can see here, I'm showing you that I am wearing safety glasses just in case anything does uh, go awry while I'm launching this. I just use a little wooden dowel with some orange tape over it, and uh, I have a fishing reel attached to the back end of the launcher, and I'm going to try to put the fishing line here right up in between a couple of branches. I'll see if I can show you exactly where that's going to be here. I'm trying to point to it, but we'll put a little target up here for you. So if I get it through that part of the tree, it works out nicely for where the antenna needs to pull up on the other side. So we're going to see if we can uh, shoot this line right up through there and make it uh, come out where I need it. All right, and it just uh, tipped the branch there where I was trying to get it through, but it did make it through okay. Now uh, let's take a look at how we go and pull some line back through. I'm using a pretty light fishing line, so I can't pull the steel cable directly, nor even a rope for it. So the first thing I'm going to pull through is a small piece of twine. And you can see that I just have this on a paint roller holder here, and I'm going to crank the fishing line back through from the other side to pull that up. Then once I have the fishing line reeled back over and the twine onto the other side of the tree, I'll take the twine off the line and I will tie a piece of paracord to that and I'll pull a piece of paracord back over the other way. And then once I have the paracord pulled over, I'll use that to pull over the steel cable. And here I'm just showing you a quick example of what happens if you don't carefully unravel and unwind your paracord and lay it out carefully before you start to try to pull it back over the tree. This is the plastic coated wire rope that I'm using. It's just a 1 8 inch galvanized steel cable with plastic coating over it. And I am putting in a wire clip here and I'm just going to make a loop in the wire rope. I am not using a wire rope thimble to hold the loop in it, and mainly the reason is that my experience is I'm not going to be pulling on this hard enough with the wire antenna here that it's going to actually put a kink in the end of it, so I'm just using the rope itself to make a loop. And we're just going to get this uh, tightened down, get the nuts on the clip tightened down so that everything is good and tight and it won't slip out. And then at the very end of this, I realize that I am on the wrong side of the tree, and I would be pulling this up in the wrong direction, so I need to take this over to the other side and 
we're going to pull the wire rope back over toward the side where I'm going to be tying off the antenna. All right, now that I'm on the correct side of the tree, we're going to tie the paracord that's coming over the tree to the loop that I made at the end of the wire rope here. And we'll give it a couple of good wraps and tie a good knot in it. And then I'm going to wrap the entire thing pretty heavily with electrical tape because I want to make sure that I cover the bolts sticking out of that wire clip and the piece of uh, wire rope at the end so that there isn't anything that's going to snag on branches as I'm pulling this over the tree. So we'll try to make it as smooth as we can. Then once we have that done, we'll take the end of the antenna and we'll tie that to another loop that I have at the other end of the cable. I could have just put the cable right through the insulator on the end of the antenna wire, but I prefer to have a couple of feet of completely non-conductive material between the antenna wire itself and whatever I'm using to pull it up if, I've, if I'm using something that's steel or conductive. Probably not really necessary but it eliminates a little bit of capacitive coupling and that's just my preferred method of doing it. Next we'll finish taping and tying off this end through the loop and then once we have this end of the antenna secured to the cable I can go back to the other side of the tree and grab the paracord and start pulling the whole assembly back up into the tree. The plastic coated cable should easily slide back and forth along the upper branches that are going to be moving more in the wind. And it should be substantially more rugged than just the poly rope that I had on there before. We'll just have to see how well it holds up over the winter and I will let you know in the spring how well everything uh, made out. For those of you that may be interested, this particular antenna is a homebrew 80 meter off center fed dipole. I got the dimensions for it from the Palomar Engineers website. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the show notes if you want to look it up. They've got a pretty good reference page for different types of antennas and different uh, lengths of off-center fed dipoles. They sell complete antenna kits. They also sell just the balance if you want to buy them from them. Uh, this antenna requires a 4 to 1 ballon. The one I used was just one that I happened to have in my junk drawer that I'd had for quite some time. I've also put some links in the description to um, some other 4 to 1 balloons if you want to buy one and make your own antenna. Here's a look at the plot for this. I did an SWR plot with my Nano VNA and it's actually pretty good. It's less than 3 to 1 on all of the ham bands including the work bands except for 30 meters. It's a little bit above on 30, but everything else, it's either usable without a tuner at all, or, you know, on the 7300, the internal tuner will do it, or any tuner that can do 3 to 1 or less will cover it for every handband. So far, I've been pretty happy with the performance of it. Well, that's it for this time. This repair came up on short notice after some pretty heavy winds the other day, so I thought I would share the experience with you, or at least part of it. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a click on that like button. If you're enjoying the channel or finding it useful, please consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, you can click on the bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. There's also a link to the companion website for this channel in the description. That's at a to z dot tech. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.